Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. This is the EU US edition uh, here on December 15th. Uh, today, right now, we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Varakten joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and on the agenda today, we have some action items. Um, we are looking to focus on a couple different uh, topics going into the new year and some blog posts that just came out. Uh, we have uh, a lot of ideas and discussion topics for the December newsletter. Uh, this is going to be a recap of Jenkins over the last year. So we want to make sure that we highlight as much and uh, as many great things that we were that were accomplished this year as we can. Uh, several different topics and we have some a lot of ideas already for uh, what we can include. So we want to have a, be a bigger discussion with the community at large and see what other people are uh, thinking of or what they might um, want to see. And it goes from everything from uh, platform uh, modernization itself, all the way to the uh, advocacy outreach sponsors. Um, every facet of Jenkins is something that we want to highlight in this case. Uh, and then the last few items we have on the list here, uh, we do have another LTS coming up that's going to be released in January on the 11th. Um, there's going to be a break due to the holidays at the end of the month, so a um, little bit of delay there, but uh, just yesterday, the RC uh, release candidate has been um, shared. It's ready to test. It's good to go. We have the backporting ticket ready and all set and taken care of as well, so uh, a lot of progress has been made there. Uh, the change log and upgrade guide pull request has also been submitted, so uh, we're just trying to get ahead of everything and make sure that that's ready to go uh, come time to release. Uh, there's been some talk about the pipeline Docker plugin and where it stands in terms of uh, its place within Jenkins and uh, where what that means for Jenkins and its extended community of users. Um, there will be lots to discuss on that at a later point in time, but that is something that we're working on. And then uh, finally, just the uh, couple blog posts or another pull requests that we've had come up recently that are really interesting and like to have discussion around since uh, they do address a couple of things that impact Jenkins as a whole. So uh, anything that I might have missed or anything else that anyone wants to add to the agenda today? Nothing from me. Thanks. Neither from me. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, first things first on the action items. Uh, right now we are working on a project to uh, go through any of the tickets that have been created in JIRA uh, in the website category. Uh, these are issues that were submitted regarding the Jenkins site, uh, documentation, other parts of it like that. Um, however, they are for the most part older and potentially have been actioned on since, even though the uh, initial ticket might not have been updated. So right now, uh, what we're doing is we've, uh, Alex Brandes has created a GitHub ticket uh, for, uh, for that to go through and review. Mark and I have been going through the list of remaining issues, finding out what can be closed, what doesn't need to be there, what still might be relevant and what we can do to uh, you know, move that, migrate it into the uh, GitHub so that we can track everything properly, get the progress going and you know, make, those, make, make that information just steadily available and, and where it should be. Uh, that'll also help us focus everything into one place as opposed to being uh, split between JIRA and GitHub, so uh, benefits all around. Uh, there's been an item to archive the doc mailing list and switch over to community.jenkins.io for the doc sig mailing list. Um, that is something that we'll be taking on probably in January, just due to uh, we're approaching the end of the year, end of the month. Uh, the holidays are going to include time off for a lot of folks around here, uh, but that's something that we'll work together on uh, as I'm taking over from Mark for documentation officer for Jenkins. We'll be working together to get to that point. Uh, and once we have that going, we'll be able to provide some more information. Oh, cool. Um, and Mark wanted to add that there's only 70 issues remain uh, on the website project. So uh, we've been able to close out a lot. I think there, I at least looked through 100 or something. And I know Mark had looked through more. So uh, we've, got, we've done a lot of work on that already, even though it's only been a couple of weeks, which is great. Uh, and then uh, we had a few blog posts that were uh, published recently. Uh, one, the first one here is uh, regarding the Google Summer of Code mentorship. And this was written by Jean-Marc Messon. And 
just goes over uh, the idea of being a mentor for Google Summer of Code and other projects and, and um, programs that we work with, She Code Africa, Outreachy, stuff like Oktoberfest. Uh, being a mentor is really, really important and helps push these along. Um, you get to feel like you're contributing, helping people. Uh, you get to flex your knowledge if you are a mentor. And um, it's not a full-time commitment. It's a smaller commitment that we're looking for. Um, not talking full day dedication or anything like that. Um, you can see here, we've got about five to eight hours per week. Um, and that's, you know, that's doable for a lot of folks. Um, but for mentorship, it's a really crucial part of all the projects that we work in. And we want to make sure that uh, we can share that with people, potential mentors, existing users that maybe have not thought about this sort of thing before, um, and new users that are getting into Jenkins and contributing a lot, uh, you know, recently, especially, uh, we've got new release leads and there's a lot of people joining up and with Hacktoberfest now come and gone, we've had a ton of new contributors that, uh, may be interested. So definitely share this out as much as you possibly can make sure that, uh, you know, if anything comes up let people know that this sort of information exists and that it's um, you know, something that we'll always be here to help with, whether it's questions, uh, additional mentorship or otherwise. Uh, the next blog post that I wanna mention here is uh, Damien Portal has recently created a blog post and uh, alert essentially for um, this coming Sunday, December 18th, uh, Jenkins, uh, we'll have an interruption and we'll have some downtime uh, for Jenkins contributors and uh, actually running things in Jenkins. Um, users of Jenkins won't be affected in the same way, but uh, JFrog, who we want to thank as a continuing sponsor of Jenkins, uh, wants to perform some maintenance just to make sure that everything's working properly for Artifactory. Uh, this will look like six hours of downtime uh, between um, I think it's 11 a.m. Uh, Israel or yeah. So 9 a.m. That's 9 a.m. 9 a.m. UTC. That's what it is. Yep. Till 15. So what's that? Till 3 p.m. UTC is the is the time range Sunday morning. Okay. Uh, and we'll also the Jenkins infrastructure status page will also be updated with that downtime window. So, uh, so for right click now, that look. click that link, Kevin. So we've got it in the in the. There we go. Oh, perfect. Notice that it, it says, "Hey, here's the here's the status," mm -hmm. and as that as that outage resolves, this page will be updated to show what the resolution time was. Perfect. Great. Uh, is there any other place that they might uh, that this might be relevant to? I, I know we have the community thread also talking about it. We were talking earlier about making sure that the uh, tweets and other notices are set up. Is there any other uh, communication or avenue that we need to be aware of on that, Mark? The the advocacy SIG meeting earlier mm -hmm. today recommended two additional places, the mm -hmm. Jenkins CI um, GitHub organization and the Jenkins Infra GitHub organization. And I submitted pull requests to those two. So, so if they're merged, then those pages will be updated as well. Wonderful. And if they're merged tomorrow, that's already... Friday before it, before the Sunday of the outage. So that's that's quite good. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mark. Really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, okay. Uh, following that, uh, we did publish our November newsletter just a couple weeks ago or on December 5th. So just again, our monthly newsletter highlighting November for Jenkins, uh, a lot of the governance updates. We had our elections um, security updates, infrastructure updates, again, uh, standard of what our newsletter is now meant for. And um, again, this is a little bit less than what the year end recap will be. Uh, it's going to be a massive post comparatively, but uh, a lot of wonderful, wonderful updates, a lot of great information. And uh, once again, just a wonderful way to highlight our community, our users, and anyone that, uh, you know, is part of the Jenkins project. So now, now Bruno, I guess I do have a question for you. Really? Usually, we, you've been the one who's kindly converted the Google Doc into an ASCII doc format. Oh, yes. But but this next one is going to be sort of mega monster. Um, oh. Are you still okay doing that? And yeah, of course. 
Okay, uh, I will do my best. Uh, and of course, each time I think it's just about perfect, and then the review begins, and so many right. people point the finger at all the mistakes I made, but that's perfectly fine with me. It's a community effort, and I feel like everyone's yeah. putting it together. So it's uh, it's on everyone, Bruno, not just you. Okay. But um, yeah, and uh, and as an aside on that too, for the December newsletter, um, since there's going to be so much, and since we want to make sure that a lot of these, if not all of these topics are at least mentioned, highlighted to some degree, um, I'm going to be looking through it very carefully myself and reviewing it along with Mark to make sure that uh, everything is good to go on that one. So uh, ideally, you won't have to worry about as much of that in this case, since I'll be uh, helping you out and working on it as, as well. Uh, and but for me, it's a lot of making sure, like I'll, it's it's what I want to do is make sure that these topics are put on there. So if, um, you know, if Damien provides a platform update or, uh, you know, I'm providing the documentation update, there's a lot of different things that could be in different places, topics that might, uh, you know, be coinciding with other topics or other ideas. But um, at the end of the day, we just want to make sure everything's sorted properly and connected and makes sense and, and you know, post, most importantly, highlights what we've been able to do in Jenkins over the last year. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, and again, like, this is a big one. There's a lot of information that's going to be there. So, um, I'm, this is pretty much one of my main uh, focuses for the next week or so. And um, you know, and obviously we might not have it published before the end of the month because it's a monthly yearly recap. So that might come in January, that'll come in January, but uh, between now and the publishing date, uh, I'm here for anything that you need. Great. Uh, and then uh, the last blog post that we want to look at here is something that uh, Basil Crow has just uh, put together for us, which is really nice. Um, but this is about uh, the Jenkins plugin development and that fact that we now require Java 11 as um, the minimum requirement for Jenkins. So uh, this is to address concerns, issues, questions, um, any kind of general apprehension about it. Um, Basil has done a really lovely job and put this together with charts, links, really good uh, tech examples and uh, logic and reasoning behind a lot of these changes and what's going on. Um, this was just published a few minutes uh, last hour, so uh, very new to the blog, but uh, very, very important in addressing some questions and concerns that uh, folks have had over the last um, recently. Yeah, so could you go back to that graph, Kevin? Yeah, of course. Uh, that one, that one. That little thing on the right is a point of dramatic pride. Notice that the red line, Java 11, is greater than the green line, Java 8. So we have data that says that Jenkins users are, in fact, switching to Java 11. Now, if you look at the slope of the curve, there it's quite similar to the slope of the Java 8 adoption curve. So, so it gives us good hope that we're going to see Java 11 adoption continue. Now, I'm even more excited by that Java 17 curve because that's a much steeper slope than previous next-gen JDK adoption curves, right? When during the J JDK 11 period, you see the early parts of the Java 11 thing, the slope of that curve is almost dismaying. It's so, so shallow. Whereas that nice steep jump in Java 17 gives us good hope that hey in 12 months or whenever we we're ready to make even more progress on java 17 great so special thanks to basel to so many others who did so much work to make this happen yeah i wasn't yeah. there in 2018 2019 when the switch to java 11 started but uh, i have uh, the feeling that everybody in the core development team and in the infra team is pushing uh, for the adoption of uh, GDK 17. So I think it's a first in the history of Jenkins, maybe. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, we're almost not late. <laughs> right, right. Which, which is dramatically better than past behavior. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Mark, for all the additional context. That really helps. And this is really great to see. And especially with um, 
I know the Java 17 uh, adaption and, and so far uh, it's been really, really reassuring and really uh, giving us the results we're looking for of fixing a lot of things and making life easier. So uh, that that last little curve, like you said, that steep up, uh, gradient is really nice to see. Great. So, um, so now that we've gotten through the action items, just uh, we can go over the just some newsletter topics, ideas. Uh, Mark and I put this together recently, and it's been coming since uh, Docs Office Hours as well last week. So um, this is just something that's going to be an ongoing project for the time being as we move towards creating it. But um, just looking through this, uh, we have a lot of different topics platform modernization, user experience improvements, development acceleration, uh, website improvements, localization simplification, our uh, Jenkins governance board elections and officer elections, uh, the outreach and advocacy that's been performed over the last year, uh, security updates, we've had lots of those, infrastructure changes and updates, um, and sponsor contributions. These are very vast and cover a lot of ground. Is there anything um, that we could add to this list in terms of a general topic or uh, area to highlight? Uh, or if you notice anything that uh, is already categorized here or listed, um, is there something you'd like to see for it specifically? Is there something that uh, you know maybe looks related to something you had in mind or and isn't there, we can add it? Um, yeah, I'm just curious to see what uh, everyone else might think. And we have a lot of, we also have a lot of content for almost all of these things. We've had blog posts about Java 11, Java 17. Uh, the system D was a big change over earlier in this year. We have a blog post for, um, and then this, the more general topics, stuff like backend dependency and front end dependency updates, making sure that we're staying at the forefront of that. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I guess was... to, make ahead, the, Sorry. to make the translation easier for Bruno, Bruno, is there any yeah. guidance you want to give in terms of how we lay out that Google Doc? So, for instance, I'm tempted, yeah. Kevin, if you jump up to the sort of the topmost on the require Java 11, support Java 17, and system D migration. I'm prone to embed links to, to more details into each yep. of those saying, look here, is it okay if they're embedded as hyperlinks or does that make your that's experience perfect. doing the ASCII doc awful? No, no that's fine. Uh, that's okay. Um, lists and embedded links is fine with me. Okay. All right. So, so you, that, that doesn't because there i assume there will be a lot of that if i'm writing this i'm going to be <laughs> bragging and pointing right bragging and pointing bragging and pointing that's fine okay cool all right and um thank you very much uh bruno and uh no i since i'm typically working in ASCII doc myself uh i might just end up writing some versions that have the links and everything set up for you if i can um i'll do what i can to help you out though on that front okay thank you but that should be okay yeah, either way. Um, and yeah, and I think, and, and Mark, now this is something I just thought of, uh, as far as all these items go, uh, when we when we point them out on the newsletter, should we look to keep it brief and keep it to a few sentences for each item, uh, since there's gonna be a lot, or um, in the case, like obviously there where we have the blog post, we can link to it and share that and, and let that do a lot of the talking for us. Um, but yeah. in the cases where that's not where that isn't um, possible, yeah. So for me, I think brevity will be be useful here. I would assume even more important is that we want some intermixed images scattered throughout this thing, mm -hmm. so that people have the visual relief of breaking a breaking a large bulk of text with with pictures of something. So it may be a Java for the UX improvements. Those those should be UI screenshots. Mm -hmm. uh, for I was thinking for the pipeline steps documentation improvements, screenshots of the page. Um, for for some of the others, it may the vision presentation. I think, for instance, if CloudBees is willing to allow public access to the DevOps world recording, we should embed the link to that video, or even better, get their permission to put it on YouTube in the Jenkins account, 
So then it then it gets registered right in the page as a nice clickable clickable link. So those kind of things for me are are they they improve the chances that people will read it. The other mm -hmm. piece, I guess, with something this long, is we probably better start with a table of contents so mm -hmm. that people can read the summary of, hey, here's this, 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 this. And now maybe another question, do we have too many themes? So mm -hmm. count. could you help me with a quick count of the themes, Kevin? It looks like there's at least 12 or 15. 10? 10, okay. Well, like so and the guidelines i think three three to seven is typical list length that people tolerate so maybe we ought to look to i don't know maybe we need to think more about should we combine some of these mm -hmm. or, or 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 remove them okay yeah and i think stuff like elections could probably go into like outreach and advocacy maybe or uh, yeah um, and, and some newsletter do a T L uh, D R uh, part, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the main topics, and then they go in greater details. I think of the Pine sixty four newsletters that I read earlier uh, these days. So maybe we could have less subjects in the first part, and then maybe do something bigger later on in the documentation. Just a suggestion. Uh, I'm not sure that would be a good idea, but. But, so how does the TLDR concept in the Pine newsletter work? So they do a, 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 a one sentence series, a series of one sentence items, or how does it work? Mm, no, it's a kind of summary. It's not, um, let me find it for you. Um, I think it would be more something like in 2022, Jenkins was able to do X, Y, and Z. And a big thanks to everyone that helped maybe like one or two other ideas that you want to share in that and then everything would be just kind of formatted after the fact um at least i, I don't know how it works with pine news one i just know i've seen some tldrs like that so it's just a, a, a list and the rest of it is uh, sentences real sentences but we already are working with a uh, list so yeah TLDR. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. So the so the TLDR for them is top level bullet, one level indentation, one level below that, mm -hmm. no more. So it's a table of contents. So it's it's basically what we've done as our outline yeah. is their TLDR. Mm -hmm. Okay, ah, you're right. So I like that. Yeah, that makes life a lot easier if that's the case. <laughs> well, and then if we if we make those things clickable and mm -hmm. have them jump to that section of the document. Now, now it's not just the themes, but it's the themes plus the, the, the details of each theme, right? Mm -hmm. So nice, okay. Yeah, I like that a lot personally. I think that would be a really good format and especially where now you can just kind of list everything out as you're going through it. And it's okay that it's as long as it is because you've already got this here. You can jump to where you need to be if we set it up like that, yeah. No, that's a uh, that's a good. I like it a lot personally. And yeah, it looks like it's really for and it's super adaptable and putting the yeah. images and everything else won't throw anything off. Yeah. With how much we're looking to put on there, it might be worth hmm. checking trying it out. Yeah, for sure. Cool. That's great to know. Thank you very much, Bruno. Love it. You're welcome. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and I know Mark and I have gone over this list a handful of times and we're looking for any other additional input, ideas, stuff like that. Um, Bruno, as far as uh, the stuff that you've been working on, I know that you're uh, leading the, some of the platform SIG meetings and stuff like that. Is there anything that you'd want to make sure is listed here or um, uh, yeah, highlighted? I'd love to, but I think I would have to discuss uh, maybe with Damien about that. But I have a few subjects about Docker images for the agents and also alternative platforms like ARM32, ARM64. I think those kind of progress we made this year could or should appear in that section. But I have to discuss that with Damien because what I see is as important is maybe not seen as with um from other people as important it's just because that's the kind of things i like <laughs> which is not the case for everybody so 
we'll see. But yes, I have a few subjects to add if you don't mind. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, of course, the, do whatever you need to do. Talk to Damien. Uh, you know, obviously figure out what you what you want to. Uh, but I mean, if we're going to do a TLDR, something like that, where we are mm -hmm. listing out smaller ideas, I like we can include more if that's the case. I don't want to overload it, obviously, and make it too, too big. But yeah. um, depending on how we get to that list, maybe maybe it's worth putting that in there. Maybe that's in the development acceleration. Maybe that's something uh, else that we can highlight. Maybe that's a totally different subject that we don't even have here that we can talk about. You know, <laughs> we'll find like out. That. Yeah. But, well, so so the the Docker ones that you were discussing, Bruno, I think are a good fit under the platform topic up above. Yep. They're they're clearly clearly platform modernization and platform platform enhancements, right? Docker mm -hmm. images, new platform support, and oh, actually, let's I get regularly reminded instead of the word Docker, let's use the word container. Yeah. <laughs> Because Docker is a vendor of a container solution, but the things are containers. Great. Okay. Yep. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Bruno. Yeah, that sounds great. Like I like, uh, yeah. And it, I like the different perspectives and, and thought processes because even if one of like Mark or I doesn't think it's important, it might be very important to the people that are not, you know, able to say as much or aren't taking a minute to share that with us. So um, I think that's always very, very valuable to discuss and figure out and, and, you know, at the very least find out, discuss, decide whether or not it is. So yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Uh, we had we had some website improvements, like, and that was thanks to a lot of the work in the Google Summer of Code projects. Um, we had the She Code Africa contribution contributions constantly, um, which were really great in helping us with revamping some of the screenshots and a lot of the inclusive naming stuff. They were also able to provide new examples and all sorts of testing, which was great. So. Um, a lot of that stuff's going to be there, I think, and we have the blog post for that, so we can always link to that directly. Um, as far as some of the website stuff goes, Mark, would um, would stuff like the web components fall under this too? I know uh, Gavin was working a lot on not the web not components. deployed yet, and I'm not sure we're going to oh, get okay. them deployed by by end of year. So okay, so they could be, but but actually, I was thinking we might successfully eliminate a uh, well no not really sorry no i take it back i was going to say we could can can combine website improvements under google summer of code but that only works for one of the three items that are there mm -hmm. so that's a bad choice right and then and we have the plug in health scoring which is a totally different kind of idea from that i guess or right so, there, there there were three other google right. summer of code projects so so putting website improvements there we might find ways to scatter those improvements elsewhere so we could eliminate the website improvements theme, but mm -hmm. let's keep thinking. Okay. Cause I, yeah, that sounds good. Cause I feel like these could also fit into like user experience improvements or something along those lines, because that does affect how people are using the, the Jenkins site uh, itself, but yeah. Uh, and then uh, Alex Brandis did a lot of uh, work just kind of getting the crowd in uh, piece going. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the doc's office hours earlier this year going through it, talking about it, um, just showing what is possible with it, which is really great. So I um, want to make sure that that is highlighted really uh, a lot, obviously. Uh, da -da -da -da. And yeah, I we can uh, table that for right now. This document's always available and so is Gitter, uh, Matrix, any other chat channels that you want to throw an idea in, please like uh, message me uh, or uh, notice me, whatever it is, uh, by all means, so that we can add that in. Um, and then we are over time a couple of minutes. So just to kind of finish things up, uh, again, we have the LTS 2.375.2 coming. Uh, that'll actually be released in January, but we have a lot of the uh, 
pre-work done right now. So the change log and upgrade guide, the release candidate, uh, backporting, all of those things have been uh, either submitted or merged already. So uh, any reviews, any ideas on that, much appreciated. Uh, and then um, there's been discussion about the pipeline Docker plugin, what that means for Jenkins, what that means for the documentation. It's a lot far more far reaching uh, than initially thought. So there's going to be a lot of discussion that won't be something that gets resolved until uh, January at the very earliest, but it is something that we are uh, very, very um, uh, mindful of and working on because uh, this can affect a lot of people in different ways. Um, and then finally, just a quick note that there was a uh, pull request that Mark had made uh, suggesting that board member uh, rules can be uh, modified a little bit right now, but there's five board members, one being um, Kansuge, and then the rest are elected. Uh, if the, if there are, uh, it's more than 50% of representation by a company, it's uh, not allowed. So just discussing ways to work around that, talk about uh, ways to engage people and get them on the governance board as well. Um, but something we can talk about later, no worries there. Uh, anything else uh, anyone wanted to discuss, check in, mention? If not, I think we're okay. We'll end things here and the recording will be available in about 24 to 48 hours. And thank you so very much as always for uh, joining us here. Uh, we will have a section next week, so uh, we'll check in again before uh, going on going on OMIA for a little bit. So 